One of the most important parts of a bullet journal for me is the bullet journal theme. However, I feel like this is a very difficult thing to explain because it's incredibly personalized. And so instead of explaining this is how you make a bullet journal theme, in today's video I want to show you my process for designing a bullet journal theme from start to finish. That way you can take your own tips out of it and then tweak the method however you want for your own bullet journal. So as a general overview, I would describe a bullet journal theme broadly, this is a broad definition, but just as a type of design that you use when making your bullet journal spreads. It could be the color palette, the drawings that you use, the fonts that you use, if you use them at all. By the way, this is all optional. And for most people, I feel like this changes every single month. So for me, in January of this year, I had a whale theme. So I used the color blue, I used watercolors, I drew whales. And then in February, I had like a vampire theme with roses. So I changed my color palette to red and brown. And these differences separate the months from each other other in my bullet journal so I can visually separate each moment in time. I thought that was a bad definition. I don't know. It's again hard to explain but let me show you. So when I was thinking of theme ideas to do for April I've been wanting to do something very very spring. Maybe flowers but I feel like flowers are rather generic. No offense to anyone who does flower themes but I just want to do something a little bit more original. Another thing that I haven't really talked about too much on this channel before the past three themes that I've done so far for the beginning of 2024 one was watercolor and blue, one was alcohol markers, one was just random markers in my journal, and they each had very distinct styles and very different themes. But all three themes so far this year have just been a little underwhelming. I Someone had to say it. You may not think that, but personally for me, I've just been very meh mid about my bullet journal themes so far this year, and I really want to make just a couple that I'm really excited to go back and look at. And the first step that I took was going back to last year's. Let me grab them here for you. So these are the two bullet journals. Oh, you can't see them. These are the two bullet journals that I used last year. The orange one was for the first six months and the brown one was from the second six months. But I want to specifically call attention to May of last year. This was the cover page of my May bullet journal and as you can see there is a drawing of Alice in Wonderland on it and then there's also a lot of like scrapbooking and other additions to this page. There was a lot going on in the spread but this was actually my number one favorite bullet journal theme last year. It just stood out to me because I loved, loved, loved making spreads in this bullet journal theme. When you flip through the pages you see that I just had so much artistic like expression and joy this month because I was really interested in the theme, I loved the color palette, I loved the aesthetic, and I really ran with it in the weekly spreads. Thinking about my April 2024 theme, I want to do something very similar to this. So with that thought process in mind, let's go on to the next step which is finding inspiration images. So one thing that I love to do is go on my best friend Pinterest.com. First I looked up pictures of spring, spring aesthetic, and obviously it was gonna give me flowers and stuff, but I was trying to narrow down like what niche, what section of spring do I want to focus on for April? And then I kind of went down the road of woodsy spring. Like there's definitely flowers and light, but there are like trees and stuff. And then I started thinking of woodland creatures and maybe pixies or fairies or something like that. And I also want to point out, so this is my sketchbook and I've been doing a lot of drawing on my own recently that I haven't been filming and it's been very fun just to, you know, do some art for myself. And one thing that I drew last week, this I finished on the 12th of March is this picture right here. So this is obviously a little woodland fairy with an owl in the middle of the woods and this was fun to draw. I'm not going to be doing something specifically like this for April, just a spoiler alert, I'm definitely going to be doing something different. However, this inspired me because I loved drawing like an elven fairy-like creature and you know something that's a little fantastical and not of this world. I may be asking yourself, Sophie, didn't you do a very similar thing for February? And that's true because in February I drew a vampire, but I'm going to talk to you guys later in this video about why I'm doing something a little different from that, so stick around for that. Anyway, with all of these factors in mind, my Pinterest scroll brought me to a picture of Tinkerbell. And honestly, that's it just clicked. I was like, I should do a Tinkerbell theme because for May last year, I did an Alice in Wonderland theme. And that was like, you know, something Disney, like a character that people know of. And I was like, Tinkerbell, I love Tinkerbell, great character. And there's obviously plenty of books and movies about her. And I don't want to do something like specifically Disney, but I was thinking like Tinkerbell or a Tinkerbell looking 
fairy. And I also found this specific photo here of an artist who had drawn Tinkerbell before that I'm going to take specific inspiration from. It was a picture of Tinkerbell with Lily of the Valley flowers. And I love those flowers. They're super pretty, like the upside down, like white bell looking shapes. So then I was like, oh, this is a great idea. I wanted to find pictures that I could print off the internet that I could then somehow integrate into my spread. I went to the library today and printed out all of the pictures that I found on Pinterest, put into a Google Doc and then printed. So this one has butterflies and Lily of the Valley flowers. This one has more butterflies, more in brown tones. Here's the music sheet that I'm going to print out to layer with, some extra photos that are in the same green forest aesthetic. And then, oh, I didn't even know this folded. Well, this page specifically has colors I think fit the color palette I'm going for more than these. These are more cool toned. I prefer these warm toned and also this tree looks like the tree from Pixie Hollow. I'm not 100% sure how I'm going to use all of these photos specifically but I wanted to have them just so whenever I'm actually making the spreads I can play around with ordering and layering everything. As you can see this is kind of like the process I go through to formulate a theme and I was actually surprised that I came up with one relatively quickly last night. So I still have a couple days to like get everything together before shooting day but but I do want to show you my process of just sketching out and planning my spreads as well. So the next step in planning out my theme is planning the color palette. So now that I have the photos printed, I want to find colors in both alcohol markers and water-based markers that will match these colors. So I pulled out my sketchbook here and I literally wrote planning my March theme, but I crossed it out and put April because I meant April. Normally when I'm planning themes, I usually like to pick the color palette first and just have an overall idea before I go and sketch anything. So although I haven't actually sketched anything on my bullet journal directly yet, because I am printing out images to put in the setup, I want to make sure my markers match the images. So I printed the pictures first and now you can find colors that match. One thing to think about though is these are my colors for my March bullet journal that was frogs. So it was a lot of green, blue, and pinks, or I guess orangey peaches, it's less of a pink more like an orange but I want to make sure that this month is different from last month and like I don't want it to be the exact same colors all over again so this is kind of more cool toned whenever I plan out the colors for this month specifically I want to use more warmer greens browns and yellows so I pulled out my alcohol markers and one thing that's super helpful is my Sanjoki markers I swatched all the colors beforehand so I'm going to focus my color picks around this area and then also a couple browns and let's just kind of swatch colors and see which ones I like together. Okay, so here's a list of tentative color ideas from the Sanjoki alcohol marker set. I'm feeling very iffy about this color palette right now. You know, it works together, but it's just not very pretty in my opinion. Oh, one other thing to think about is I'm going to be drawing Lily of the Valley flowers. So obviously I need a color for those. Okay, so I added a warm gray to color in shadowing on the Lily of the Valley because while they are white flowers, they are of course gonna have some shadowing and depth to them. I might change these a little bit, but let's just try to find water-based markers that match. So I'm gonna look through this cup because this green right here looks very similar to this one, I'm pretty sure. Okay, it's a little lighter, but I can kind of tentatively keep this one on the roster. Okay, so I did a little bit more swatching. As you can see, there are a lot more colors on this side, mostly because I was trying to like match these colors. So a couple of them, I have like multiple that could kind of line up. Again, I'm feeling very mid about this. I'm not gonna lie, but it is easier to look at the colors whenever they're in the images. So over here on the right side of the page, maybe later this week, I'm gonna try and sketch some thumbnails and look at placement of colors and see if I like these or if I want to alter them a little bit. And by the way, all of these colors right here, these ones on the right are from Sanjoki. These numbers on the left are from Tombow's. And then these LM Almond or M Golden, that's like light medium almond or medium golden from the Crayola Super Tips Color of the World set. All of the stationery that I usually use in my bullet journal is always linked in the description box of all of my videos if you want to check them out and if there's something that is not linked that you have a question about just comment and I will send you the link to any stationery that I use.
hi hi so it's friday and i want to do a quick little update before i run off to class in like five minutes so i've actually been obviously working on my theme as you can see my desk is a mess this right here are the lists of colors that i found on camera yesterday but this morning i kind of spent some time obviously testing a couple more markers <laughs> just to double check that i like picked ones that i liked because like i said this was kind of not hitting for me and i have decided on this color palette up here so these are the alcohol markers and these are the water-based markers ignoring all these at the bottom it's just those at the top as you can see in comparison these ones focus more on like a warmer yellow than this like bright cooler toned yellow and i think that's what was throwing me off the most because i don't like this like highlighter yellow color very much and then also these greens are a tiny bit more like muted and cooler toned than this like bright lime green which not only is again easier on the eyes in my opinion it also differentiates this green from these colors that I used for March. Like I said, I wanted to do something different. And then also I wanted to use this color right here, this O20, it's actually a Tombow, but I only had one and it was, as you can see, running out of ink. So I just quickly ran to Michael's and I grabbed this Tombow, it's 020. And technically it is like a really light, yellowy, orangey, beigey color. It's like the cap doesn't do it justice, but this is the color. Oh, I'm also looking at these three washi tapes. This is a green one, one that kind of matches that color actually of words and then just some green dots. So hopefully I can figure out ways to integrate this into the spread as well. Anyway, that's where I'm at. I need to go to class, so talk to y'all later. Now, one thing I mentioned in this video is that the idea that I have here, of course, was very similar to May of last year, but it's also slightly similar to February. In February of this year, I did an alcohol marker drawing of a fantastical character, which was a vampire. And I said at the beginning of this video that my three themes so far this year have been a little underwhelming for me for various reasons. And so you might be asking yourself, isn't this very similar? Like it's not, you know, what, what's the difference here between April and February? I did talk about this a little on my channel before, but when I did my November theme last year, which was this lioness queen is what I always like to say I had a very big issue because as you can see on the right side of the spread there is a bright yellow replication of this and it's because when I closed the journal and by the way I used alcohol markers when I closed the journal and kept it closed the alcohol markers rubbed on the other side of the page now this is not an issue I've had before or at least I've noticed before and so what I did was I blamed it on the fact that I used a different type of sticker paper that month than I usually do and I assumed that the sticker paper didn't absorb the marker as much and I still stand by that because I have never ever seen it reflect on the other side so much and so brightly and pigmented however I looked back at some of my old instances of using alcohol markers like for example here in March of last year and although it's faint, you can see a little bit of a yellow residue on the other side of the page as well. I hadn't noticed it before, but now that I'm looking out for it, I do see it. And I think it's because I'm using a lot of warm colors. So while part of it may be the sticker paper, it also could be the saturation of the colors that I'm using. And I really noticed this because in February of this year, this was my setup. As you can see, there is once again, yellow on the side of the page. And so I've actually been covering it up. I feel like a teacher doing this, oh my gosh. By using like this black paper that I've like taped into this side to protect it from becoming yellow on the page. I can't hold a microphone to that at the same time, but yeah, I put a black piece of paper on the other side of the page to protect it from yellowing, but I was realizing that the problem that I had very prominently with November was actually kind of creeping into other themes as well. So what I decided to do was try some sort of sealant. And this is actually a recommendation from a subscriber. I got this bottle of Mod Podge. It's very small i think it's like four ounces yeah four fluid ounces and this is just a matte water-based glue sealer and finish so what i'm hoping to do and i will double check it before i film is paint this on top of a finished piece with alcohol markers because if i didn't make it very evidently clear all of this bleeding over with the yellow has happened because i've used very pigmented alcohol markers and so once i finish doing my art on sticker paper i'm going to hopefully paint over this and this will create a completely transparent sealant on top that will just protect the artwork and will not let any pigment seep through and bleed onto the other side of the page that is what i'm hoping hello hello so i've mostly sketched out the general overview of my spreads that i'm going to be filming this weekend so honestly there's not much on this cover page it's because i'm going to be doing my main art on sticker paper like i mentioned earlier so i've actually got a piece of sticker paper here with three different 
pictures, this one is sideways, of Tinkerbell. They're not perfect sketches, I'm probably going to go and tweak them a little more, especially this one's face I think is just proportion wise off, but I kept doing it over and over and it just kept turning out weird. I'm gonna have to go and fix them, but anyway, these are like, you know, it's Tinkerbell, super cute, and I'm gonna add other things. It'll be a collage spread here on the cover page, which is why there's no sketching. Coming to the next page, the pencil is very light. Hopefully you guys can kind of see what I'm talking about, but there is a one page calendar on this side, a box here for focus, and then down here is gonna be my goals and to-dos, and then I'm gonna paste in another picture of Tinkerbell right here and do some more layering as well as up in here. The next spread is my academic planner, so I have four rows, each with five different, oh, that's four boxes. Okay, good thing I just checked that. So these are actually four by four. I need to add an extra box here because <laughs> I have five classes, not four from Academic Planner. Anyway, but this is where I'm gonna put all of my college tasks and there's more room on the side for again, decoration. Coming onto this spread, this is very similar to my tracker spread in March, but I basically am just gonna have one big header for April. And then on one side I have my expenses and on the other side I have my habit trackers with nine different habits. And then the last spread is actually gonna be a weekly spread and I have yet to actually sketch it out, but I am gonna put the last Tinkerbell image in the corner down here in this spread. So that is my overall plan. And like I said, everything is very minimally sketched. I don't like to erase too much in my videos, which is why I do that and also because this is like a scrapbooking theme it's more about like where the placement of the images are and i usually do that on camera without planning beforehand a couple last design choices that i want to talk about so right here this like april title in the boxes is what i'm planning to do most of the headers in so since i have sticker paper i'm probably just going to write april but then like cut them out in little squares and paste them. Another thing I wrote down here was an 01 fine liner. I did this really fancy for no reason, but I'm gonna be using a very light fine liner for these spreads. When I pull out a couple fine liners I have, I have size 05, size 03, and then size 01. Out of all three of these, the five is the thickest and then the one is the thinnest. So I'm going to be using the size 01 for all of my black liner tomorrow. The last thing I wanna mention is, let me flip back in my bullet journal. So this is a spread that I made in the middle of March. And as you can see, all the boxes are rounded. I feel like that just gives it more of a casual feel. For April, I'm not gonna be doing that. All of the boxes are going to have harsh edges. If you can see right here, like the sketch has a very harsh edge. It's not rounded. This is a really simple thing, but it does help me to like differentiate between different themes is the way that I draw just simple boxes themselves. And I said this multiple times in this video before, but I'm trying my hardest to differentiate this theme from March because they are similar in some aspects. So one of the ways I'm doing that is also the way that I'm drawing my boxes. Okay, so hopefully by this point in the video, you guys have seen my entire setup. I hope this kind of gave you an overview of how I create a bullet journal theme, my thought process, and so you guys can do very similar things. And if you haven't seen my April bullet journal official plan with me that I posted a couple weeks ago, I will have it here on the screen so you can go check it out and see the full finished look. But this was a very fun process. Let me know in the comments if you have any questions. I will answer all of them. As always, subscribe because I'm posting bullet journal content every single week. And let me know down below also what your bullet journal theme is if you have a theme for April. I'm sending you so, so much love. Again, subscribe below and I will see you guys next week for a new video.